So you, <laughs> wonderful. But, uh, so you, you knew uh, John Hayams, you, you had met him on a set of... of no, no, I knew his father. His father. Peter, yeah, I, I made a movie with Peter. Narrow margin. Narrow margin, right. Yeah, and, and, and John was on the set, he was a gaffer or something like that? Maybe he was, but I didn't remember. When did you when when did you read the script? What what is the, that that captured you? Uh, it, it seemed like a pretty honest movie, uh, you know, in a milieu that was not quite the usual thing. Uh, kind of interesting, and besides, I could do it on a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, as you, as you said, it's a new, unusual. How did you? Build in your mind the, the Bob's story. I mean, the, the whole, you know, we see him in and out. There is a, a, a mystery to it, and then there is a revelation at the end. But how much did you think of him, and uh, what did you make of his backstory? His backstory? Yeah. I can't tell. Oh, why? I can. It's a secret. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, it's not. I can't. I, I don't, you know, it. it Strange things occur to me at, at times, something occurs to me and, uh, you know, I use it or I don't use it. But it all had to do with, uh, you know, that last scene, which is what, what happened to him or what he did. And that didn't really happen until we shot it. You mean the, 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 the lines or the... Uh, the lines, yes. Oh, really? Yeah. So it was written completely differently? It was written... No, no, it wasn't completely differently. It was just a little underwritten. So, uh, you know, the story was there, essentially what he did, but not quite the why and, you know, what happened at, at that, uh, you know, he was sitting in the bar and he saw the guy and all of that. We, we didn't have any of that stuff until we shot it. Oh, interesting. Is that always, is that often the way you work where things, you, you, you let things percolate uh, and, and then they come out as an intuition or it, it just happens to be this, this thing in this film? Well, it's different all the time. It depends. You know, some things are um, written and some things are uh, not. If, <laughs> Jules wrote it, for instance, he would insist on saying it just as it's written. <laughs> but in this case, it wasn't written, so we made it up. Do you enjoy uh, working con with, with younger director that, you, you, you're very generous that way. I mean, uh, you know, you've worked with Derek Sian France. You, you're very open to uh, oh, yeah, having sure. talent. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I mean, why not? Well, what do you enjoy about it? Uh, working. <laughs> <laughs> um, there is something about the openness, uh, as I was saying. You know, the big, your openness to to different kind different kind of work. You know, and I, and I was thinking about it. You spent before uh, becoming an actor. You spent time in Europe, and you wanted to. Be, you were being a painter in Florence. And do you think that part of your life, this sort of, contributed to this sort of wide curiosity that you have about about the roles I mean you know people seem to tend to a lot of actors tend to be crystallized on certain parts you know the, and you are just it just every time is a surprise well I, I don't know why that is <laughs> that's uh, I guess uh, I, I know earlier I mean some years ago many years ago people always used to say hey you played the bad guy which I did a lot of times, but you know, somebody had play a, a good guy. I don't know why it is. Did, did it bother you when did we were being uh, cliche, stereotyped as a bad guy? Well, uh, yeah, any kind of stereotyping kind of, I Annoying. found vaguely disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, but they don't, obviously they don't send you script that are all alike because you, you get an enormous variety of, of characters. Well, as long as they keep sending scripts. <laughs> and that's the important thing. It, there, is, there is something about the film, and uh, you know, I made the reference before to Michael Ritchie, and, and, you know, and, and yeah. um, I think that John Hyams, in a couple of interviews, said that he liked this, 
the uh, the story because it's, it was a sense of place because the characters had depth and uh, and it reminded him some films of the 70s uh, you know a, a kind of cinema filmmaking that was more uh, frequent in the 70s do you agree that's the, the, when you started making films when I started it was in the 60s but yeah yeah but okay Maybe, but, I thought it was 70, but that's fine. Well, it was, no, it, yeah. was, it probably came out. The first film I made was End of the Road. Uh-huh. Yeah, and that was shot in 68. Wow. I happen to remember this because uh, there was a, a, a scene in the, it was from the John Barth novel, if anybody knows that, and a lot of people probably do. But the first sh uh, scene or that I shot uh, was meant to be, it was in August, and it was in the Berkshires. And I was swinging naked off of a rope, uh, dropping into a river full of Boy Scouts. <laughs> Except we didn't shoot it in August because of one thing and another. So when we came to shoot it, it was November. <laughs> and I still think to this day, they kept saying, let's do another. It was cold. So I remember it was 1968. <laughs> okay, but do you do you do you see similarities or differences between uh, the the way filmmaking, especially independent filmmaking, was at the time, and and now? Well, it's not so much of a difference. For instance, between that movie and this movie, End of the Road was a movie where uh, it was kind of everybody's first movie. James Earl Jones was in. Well, it was his second. He was in Strange Love, but you know, just a little tiny part. And Stacy Keach had made, I think, one film, a smaller part. Gordon Willis was the cinematographer. It was his first movie. Michael Chapman was the operator, went on to shoot uh, Marty, Marty's movie, uh, Raging Bull and many others. And uh, Aaron Mavakian's first movie. He had been an editor and... Uh, so it was, you know, it, there was a lot of excitement around it and uh, a situation where, you know, so one guy, I mean, a guy named Max Rapp put up all the money, which was $750,000, I remember, that we shot the movie for and had a crew of about eight people. And, you know, a couple of people were saying, well, it's never going to be like this again, you know, so you better enjoy it. This is not the way it is. <laughs> But it is often the way it is, and independent movies are like that, and this movie was like that. You know, it was shot very quickly on a minuscule budget, whatever it was, I don't know, but it wasn't much, but it looks pretty good. It looks great. It looks great. The, the white, the long, you know, the white screen is wonderful. Yeah. 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 So... And it's, uh, it's all on location, right? This was yes, all location. Yeah, yeah, somewhere outside of Baltimore. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, there was a lot of energy, a lot of great energy in, in the 1970s in filmmaking. And, uh, but you know, I was always kind of in between a film and, and the theater. I was, I was always going back to the theater. So I wasn't really in that filmmaking scene very much. And you still, you, you kept going between theater and, and uh, you, still, you still do. Yeah, yeah. And where is I your, try. <laughs> where is your heart the uh, uh, the most? If, if you should, if you would say today, what? Where is your where, where is your heart the most? Uh, I hope it's everywhere I go. <laughs> <laughs> try to take it with me. <laughs> and um, in, in, when you have something in like like this film, uh, how close? If, if you have you have you, have, you said you were a weekend. How much did you work with Michael Kelly? You know, is, is, the film is... is, is, is with it, Michael? Yeah. Well, we just shot those scenes we had. Uh, yeah, but did you rehearse much with him or before? Did you... No, no, I didn't know him. Really? We, we met uh, on the set. Oh, wow. Or I think I got down there in the night before, and so we... I think we met, we said hello, and, you know, how are you? And, and then we, we shot it. We didn't hurry it. You know, we had a couple of days to shoot that. So uh, we did it. It was very nice. Yeah. 
it's very nice. I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, it's very nice. I mentioned I mentioned before um, Ozark, you know, uh, and uh, do you think that uh, television? You've 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 done a lot of television, even more recently, is yeah. is is offering. I don't know if it's the same spirit of cinema made in the 70s, but at least the opportunity to the right to the writing to have you know uh, more fuller character, uh, longer storylines, a little bit more of a uh, you know depth into in, into the, the yeah. Story. Well, that's you know there's a I mean now there's so much going on in television. I'm not even aware of how much is going on. I just know I was shooting Ozark in Atlanta, and there was a 33 television shows shooting in Atlanta, in Atlanta wow. at that time. And that was, uh, and that was excluding movies. So, you know, there's a tournament, a lot of uh, action in television with all the new venues, cable and stations and everything. So there's a lot, of, a lot going on in television, a lot of very interesting stuff. Yeah. Netflix. What was the question? The question was if the, you think that television has as 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 offering, oh yeah, if not the spirit of of you know the excitement of the seventies, but but at least the opportunity to to have stories with fuller characters and and, and yeah, and, yeah, I do. I think a lot of people think that television is where it's at, so to speak. Do you watch yeah. a lot? What? Do you watch it a lot? No, <laughs> I, I I don't. Well, I, I tend to watch TCM or, or watch movies, you know, this, this year. I, I mean, this time of the year, there's a lot you watch, of yeah, because you vote. movies to watch. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, and, well, did you like a lot of things that you saw this year, film-wise? Uh, yes. Well, I was saw Stan and Ollie last night. Is it great? Unbelievable. Those guys are so fucking good. I mean, it hurts. They're just brilliant. Brilliant, both of them, Steve Coogan and uh, and John C. Uh, Riley, right? Yeah, John C. Riley. Yeah, I, I mean, and Riley's makeup, my God, it's, it's a it's a miracle. You know, the thing's a miracle. They, it was so much fun to watch those two guys. If you love Laurel and Hardy, yeah, of course. You know, and oh my God, it's wonderful. And then the night before that, we saw Capernaum, amazing movie. Nadine Labaki, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, it's 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 a movie by a Lebanese a, a director from Lebanon, and it's it's just open, and it probably come out here. Uh, and uh, Nadine Labaki. Yeah. 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 Beautiful. Um. You raise your hand if you have questions. There. Hello? Is yes. On? I noticed that um, there were a lot of overhead shots. This is the great, inimitable Paul Davis speech. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a funny technical question, but the, there were a lot of shots overhead of the neighborhood, which would have not been possible in the 70s or in any era until we got drones. I assume those were all drone shots flying over the truck. And yeah, you know, I was wondering about that myself because I yeah. thought it could be a cherry picker shot. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it was, you could get up, you can get up pretty high yeah. and with a wide lens on a cherry picker, you know, just a, an extension. But it's you know. expensive, a, tr a cherry picker, compared to a drone. Well, they have it, yeah, you can have it out there for a day, and yeah. they probably could have done that. Well, but I don't know, I wasn't okay. there. Yeah. But, they, but it looks like, it looks like the, dr drones, because they were... They went too far for Yeah, they moved, they, went, they moved a lot. They traveled a block yeah. or two, yeah. so it would be hard it to... probably move. was. Yeah. I'd understand? never shot with a drone until sometime we had a scene in Ozark where we were walking in a field and, had, and we had a drone shot. Did you, did you understand uh, Paul's question? He was, he was wondering if the overhead shots, you know, all this, this, those, those things looking down to the, to, to, to the streets were drones and it, it, it seems likely, although he, hasn't, he wasn't there when they shot them. Yeah. Apparently it's pretty easy to do. Yes, yeah. it's, it's an expense. It's an expense. Yeah, yeah. Jules? Harris, for me, the blockbuster line in the movie was yours. Um, what? And, uh, I'm paraphrasing, so tell me when it's right. Um, 
when he, when he says, this is what getting even looks like. Yeah. Yes. It what about it? Astonishing line. Yeah. <laughs> was that on the page? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> to tell you the truth, I really don't. Because that scene was, uh, this guy, Tim, wrote the movie, who, mm -hmm. you know, and all these guys were, they were very close friends, Michael, Kelly, and uh, John, Himes, and Tim. What's his name? Do you remember? Uh, Brady? Brady? Brady, Brady, yes, Tim Brady. And they were very close friends. They had been for, I don't know, 20 years or, or uh, something. And we, and we got to that scene, and I said, it was kind of under, so we, so I said, well, I'll just, I'll just say this. And, and then I would always check in with Tim, and i say, you think, is this okay? He says, whatever you want, whatever you want, just go, <laughs> yeah, just say it. I said, well, if I can, he said, no, 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 dude, what, what? <laughs> so I, I don't remember what was there. As I said, we had the kind of basic story. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Steve. Time. And um, the kid was was great too. I mean, you have to accommodate children actors, you know, 110 uh, percent. Were you involved at all in you know the backstories of the casting and um, how the, all that went? No, I wasn't. Yeah, I, I literally went down for a weekend. That was my right. Yeah, no, that's what you yeah said. But what did you what did you think of the other performances? I mean, they. Kids. I think they're terrific actors. Yeah. My yeah. God. Yeah, it was great. Josh Lucas, I think, it was wonderful. Pamela Adlon was amazing. Yeah. I didn't know her. The mom. You know, everybody yeah. else knew her, but I didn't. Right. Yeah, she was wonderful. Excellent. Yeah, and they're all and different. And the kid was great, I the thought. The kid was terrific. Oh, right? wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Not only beautiful, but wonderful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, they, and they all these different tones. You know, they have all their different tones, uh, you know, acting tones. It's always a yeah. nice mix. It's a really, it's a really nice. Uh, yeah. Was uh, uh, part of the attraction beside the script was also the fact that the cast was so interesting? Well, I didn't know who was in the cast. Oh, really? No, I knew Michael was in the cast. Uh -huh. But I didn't know Michael. I didn't know who he was. You'd never seen House of Cards? No. I know, it's shameful. <laughs> no, it's just he has a big part. He's the chief of staff and you know, you know, in House of Cards, yeah. Yeah, right, right. How'd you like working with Michael Kelly? What was that like? With Michael Michael? Yeah. In those Terrific. scenes. Yeah. He seems like an amazing actor. Yeah, he was wonderful. It was great to work with. I don't have any good stories about Michael because I don't know if there are, but I, I don't have any. <laughs> yeah. well, uh, I have a quick question. Uh, so if you don't know all the, uh, the characters in the movie, you just took the decision to participate purely on the script and the storyline? Just curious. Yeah, well, usually there's a, a director involved and, uh, you know, whatever kind of operation it is and and the script yeah because i often don't know you know maybe nobody else has been cast yet or maybe they have or maybe i don't know them or but it's all about the script yeah and and what was the most intriguing part of the script that made you want to participate if it uh, if it breathes <sighs> okay. well it, it sure did and you did too fantastic thank, thank you. you thank you how many how many, can you give us an idea, how many scripts do you get? And, 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 uh, Not and, enough. And how many do they breathe? Oh. Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, have, do you have someone that reads be, uh, prior to you and sends you chooses, or you just get everything and you read yourself? Oh, no, I have a, a, a representative, mm -hmm. but uh, I don't think they usually read. They just, say, they just say, do you want to read this? This is from so-and-so and so-and-so. And, -so and tell me the circumstances. And then I say, okay, or looks too long <laughs> or something. <laughs> looks too long. <laughs> well, you know. 
how can you still uh, be surprised by, you know, if you've seen so many characters, you've played so many characters, you've been so many different kinds of material, how can you keep your curiosity? And uh, is it humankind? Is it the filmmaking? Is it the stories? You mean what's the interesting part? Yeah, in general. Yeah, well, how can you keep so... You know, it's the sense of marvel and discovering these characters and... and uh, well, how do you do it? You go and see films, a lot of films, don't you? I know, I well, know. Well, how, how do you go and see films and still be open to new experiences every time? I, I try, you know, it's, it's interesting, I don't know. I know that the day that I'll stop being uh, surprised or curious, I'll change my... I have to change career. Well, so. me too. <laughs> and I'm too old to change careers, so. <laughs> There's no choice. What are you working on? Uh, well, I'm uh, I'm teaching a little at Columbia, uh, and I'm uh, going to do a few uh, shows uh, called Divorce on HBO. Oh, that's a good, it's a great series. This is a romantic part, so fasten your seatbelt. <laughs> <laughs> This is a bit off script, but um, sitting in this wonderful theater, I was thinking about um, some of my days going back to being a, a, a kid uh, usher at Guild Hall. And I'm thinking in the, in, the, in the close proximity that all our East End communities share, we have more stages on the East End than any place else I've been in the world, from this wonderful high school establishment to Guild Hall to the rebuilding of the Sag Harbor Cinema to... Um, Yes, yeah, Wait, I, was, I was thinking of a Steinbeck's, the, what this, the, where Stein, Mr. Steinbeck ended up his life, the Montauk Playhouse. And um, uh, for the last five years, I've produced contemporary programming, one-offs at Guildhall. We've done some tremendous shows. What I've noticed, and this is like an off-season discussion, and Mr. Eulen has given his creative craft, um, as many other that make their part-time or full-time home here do. Some don't. They write a check, they keep going. This, is, this man has given his love to these stages. And I say this with respect and wisdom for everybody in the room. Um, what, are, what are some of the goals here, um, and this is from the stage and kind of thinking into the summertime, to make sure that the arts on the East End get younger? I think we're desperately looking for the next generation, and young patron circles of, of my banker peers don't count. It's the, it's the next generation of creatives that have roots out here that will drive back and connect uh, the artistic, um, you know, decades together. So it's just kind of a thought of what we're thinking of, and if everybody wants to talk about it from the stage, I've said what I said. Thank you. Are you, are you I'm sorry, uh, just to be clear, are you asking, uh, is the, the, the artist, to, you know, to, how did the art, the, the, in, in sense of the people that go to see this, uh, the, the, the theater and the cinema, or the people that make it? When you say, uh, how do we make the art get younger? Are you talking about the viewers or are you talking about the makers? Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's many people here that are in the biz, so to speak, and we've been able to spend time at film festivals all across the world. Now, people will come in for three days in the Hamptons Film Festival in October, right? And this is not, this, this is not the feel that's happening year round. So by way of a, uh, a very, a very, um, uh, a very well-heeled patron circle. How do they connect with their 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 grandkids that are going to be the future givers, or the performers, or the funders, to make sure that our wonderful institutions stay as vibrant? Because I know a couple of years ago I saw Tom Petty in a field right down the street at at the Ross School. That's amazing. He's not here anymore. I want to make sure that the next young people understand those parts of those legacies, or why I've seen, why I've loved Mr. Eulen's role in Ghostbusters and why I can recite that in my sleep. Where does that go next, right? And we need to be connecting these dots because there's the givers, there's the makers, there's the funders, there's the stagers, there's philanthropy, there's for-profit. And um, it's a larger picture. It's very off script. I've said enough. Thank you. I just hope to keep doing it. Thank you. Well, I, I think part part of the point of what we're doing is to encourage communicate, you know, uh, connection between uh, the uh, the makers and the viewers and the givers, of, hopefully. <laughs> so, here. Um, I'm been living in this community for 30 years. I'm 72, 
And last year, I put on a show at Guildhall, and my entire cast and crew were in their 30s. So I feel a responsibility um, as a creative person, not particularly successful or moneyed, however, to include whatever young people I happen to know in this region. And most of them are the sons and daughters um, of the parents, or rather my daughter went to this school, and most of these kids are related to her school friends. So if you want a sense of community, then those of us who do creative stuff locally, maybe we have an obligation to include those younger people and not to wait for someone else to do it. Of course, of course. I, I, I think uh, uh, that's the general idea. I mean, you know, I think, in fact, the, 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 the person, this whole, when I, when I was talking about local produce uh, before, I think we, the one, one we are planning for the spring is the complete antithesis of Harris, is a very young filmmaker who, uh, you know, grew up here and then went to NYU and recently graduated, and she's going to curate a program for us. So the notion is to be as inclusive and uh, curious as possible, and then he's a great teacher for that. Curiosity. Anything else? Okay. Thank you, Iris. <laughs> <laughs>